Nobody There's nobody there yet. Okay. Do you want me to turn your radio off? Oh, what yeah, I will. Did, what did you want? Oh, hey, I was gonna. One, I was hot. Two, did you want to eat something? It's just big. I don't think anybody's hot for you, huh? I wasn't the only one. You hot? You guys are hot? I took a poll. Really? Just stuffy. He's in, really? I'm always cold. See, so it's stuffy. I used that word today. Stuffy. <laughs> stuffy. Don't use me as a It's a country word. It's a southern word. It's so weird that it's a Friday. Right now. I can be 110 degrees in the house and I'd be fine. Today's getting Third birthday. I don't have blood. Good birthday, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My husband wore a jacket and it's 85 degrees outside. So, yeah, it drives me batty. That's a, that's an iron thing or something. Well, because my iron is so low that I, I'm like always like crazy. You'd think, but he gets tested and he's in the military. So oh, yeah. So, but no, I mean, he just had a report to regulation. He was just born on the sun. I mean, that, you know. Yeah, I know. But he, but he was like, but he was like, 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 Put it here. Yeah. You gotta hire everybody out. Hey, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna get started. Sorry, Lisa. Hey, I was like, nobody's eating the veggie pizza. I'm gonna eat it all. I'm flexible. You got veggie pizza? Yes. Yeah, see, go eat some. Because I don't do the whole. Me either. I they have cheese too. too. She's in there. And I'm shooting live. Yay! So there's already one. Hi, Jen. I know she's on there. I have to invent for about this. You can do that. Well, but sometimes that's good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because when you're on Zoom, you have to go in and mute people. and Yeah, that's true. Do all that. Okay, let me get you some chairs. So we have streamers and we have non streamers. One, and I have two in here. Or you guys could totally just sit with them. We're not afraid to be together, are you? We're not afraid to be together, right? Yeah. 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 Y
have to read it. You have to read it. Oh well. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> we can only be okay. We can only be said to be alive in those moments when our hearts are conscious of their treasures. Thor and Oh. Yeah. So are you. You're all treasures. You're too. my treasure. <laughs> you are also great. Okay, so now I can't wait to see what this is. So what you don't know about me is every card I ever get, I have. I haven't like from the time I was like two, I have every card. Enjoy oh, this day. Wow. <gasps> I know. I saw it. I was like, oh, this is Lisa. Okay, so it says enjoy this day. Be present. You'll know why in a little bit. Breathe deeply, show gratitude, live with intention, be fearless, try new things. Oh my gosh, Are you gonna cry? The script is <laughs> I know. Oh, thank you. So You're much. welcome. I love it. I know. Yeah. Now I gotta figure out how I get it in my suitcase. Oh wait. <laughs> I can. So, <laughs> so gosh, you guys, thanks so much for coming. I know that you all have really crazy busy schedules, and I know this was kind of like um you know, for some of you, you were trying to rearrange things and and uh, and get out, get out of the house tonight, get out of probably commitments that you had at this time of year. So I appreciate it. Um, for those of you who don't know me, most of you do, but there are probably a couple of you that don't. Um, I'm Lisa Hendrickson. I am the field development manager in the eastern region of the United States, and I apologize for my voice. I've been talking all week, and I'm starting to sound like like a new bloomer or something. But anyway, um. My region goes from the state of Ohio, where I live, I live in Ohio, all the way up to the top of the United States, up north, all the way down to Florida. 18 states, 18,746 consultants, give or take. Um, that's a lot of people, right? And I get to come here and be with all of you tonight. So my goal tonight is really just to kind of share some new and some not-so-new concepts and really get a good group discussion going, because... This can be like the Lisa Hendrickson show, and you guys that have heard me coach before, you know that if I'm tired, it's like watching paint dry, you have to listen to me for two hours, right? <laughs> but if you can really, you know, engage and ask questions, so there's no question that's off limits, there's no topic that we can't talk about, but I kind of put together some slides just to kind of guide us at first. So, have, has anybody seen this commercial with the heads that explode on TV? Some of you have. So. Really what I'm trying to do is I want to be able to share some ideas with you that actually might blow your mind tonight so that you leave and you go, wow, that was something I totally didn't even think about. Or maybe it's a way that you look at the business differently and you think, man, I never would have really thought about looking at the business that way. But I think in order to start this whole discussion, the first thing that comes to mind is, um, and it's going to come to mind when I turn this on, is passion. Because I can share with you amazing concepts. You can be, you can take every training course online that the Pamper Chef offers. But if you don't have this, that becomes a problem. Because we know that there's four pillars. We know that the four pillars to success or to failure in anything you do in your life are that belief, that passion, that skill, and that will. And we know that belief and passion are the drivers. Belief and passion are like the catalyst that really make you want to get up off the couch and have that will to get it done. And they're also the drivers that really help you to say, okay, I want to learn more about something. I want to get better at it, right? But it all starts with that innate excitement that you have about something, that passion. And I love this because, you know, I want you to think about what you get really, really excited about. You know, what gets you really going. And, and that's really going to be the premise for how we start this because until – until you really know what really gets you going and really gets, gets you out the door and moving every day, it's hard to kind of get one foot in front of the other. I love this next slide because everybody that knows dogs knows they have this thing, their tennis ball, right? You throw a tennis ball out there and the dog runs after the tennis ball. It's like, you know, it's like, oh, guns blazing. And so it, true. it gets the tennis ball and it runs back to you and brings the tennis ball and drops at your feet. And it's so excited that it actually got... And most dogs would do that seven gazillion times, right? Until your arm is breaking off, they're gonna keep running after that tennis ball. So what's your tennis ball? What would you go out and run through the yard 110 miles an hour over and over and over again to do? I don't know, I can't answer that question for you, but here's the thing, in, re in relationship to our business, 
what gets you really excited? What's your tennis ball when it comes to pamper shop? What's your tennis ball when it comes to things that you do in your own life? Because the goal is, as a coach and as a mentor, if I can marry the two things, if I can get you really excited about something in your personal life that can transfer over to the business, wow, now we're cooking with gas. So I'd like to start out with a little activity, because I'm nothing if I'm not full of activities. So I'm going to pass around some cards. Now, for those of you that are Zooming or streaming, streaming in, hanging out, whatever you're doing. <laughs> Do we need pens? Um, probably. Yeah. I'm just going to ask you to maybe get out a scrap piece of paper and um, in front of you, and I'll pass these cards around to everyone. So just take one card. Doesn't matter what color. Doesn't matter. I, I love colored cards because it makes me happy. It's bright. Yeah. Anything with different <laughs> colors makes me happy. <laughs> So for those, of you, for those of you hanging out with us at home, just yes, get pen. your piece of paper, get your card, whatever you want to choose to write on. Oh, for the <laughs> oh girl. <laughs> we sleep there every day. Yes. <laughs> Trust me. I hurt my leg, so it's like I'm a little sorry for it. I'm being like so about to pass me. Oh, you can't take that test. <laughs> it says lost hours. Thank you. Do you need one? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, good. So the first thing I want you to write on your card, I'm going to ask you a series of questions and you're going to write the answers to the questions. And the first answer, the first question is, I get really excited when? So answer that question. Did you want, do you have a card? Yeah. Okay, good. I don't want to leave you out. Because you're our future. You have a future of the pampered shop. Yes, what's, what's your name on? Kaya. Tyler? Kaya. Tyler. Okay, Kaya. 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 Oh, Kaya. Kaya. <laughs> we got to tell her, Kaya. <laughs> Kaya, right? Kaya. Right? Yeah. Okay, Kaya. Okay, Kaya. Sorry. <laughs> I'm I was telling Christina earlier, my ears are plugged from the plane. So, I'm, so that's why I'm talking. I feel like I'm talking really loud. Okay, so I get really excited when. Everybody got that one? Okay, the next one is, I love to, I love to, Hillary's on me, and she's got her answers like, <laughs> The next question is, I live for, I live for, That's okay. When my friends come over, they all sleep. They're like, this couch. It'll be hard not to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a little ridiculous. <laughs> it's soft. It makes you happy. It's bright. Like a big pillow. The, and the next question is, um, I am here because. Now, could mean here tonight. Could mean here at Pamper Chef. I don't want to put you in a box, so whatever that means to you. I'm here because. So I get really excited when I love to, I live for, and here because. And so those questions, you may or may not have answered them in relationship to your business. It could, you could have answered them from a personal perspective, or maybe you didn't answer them in relationship to your business. The next question, though, is the only question that I really want you to think about in relative to your business. And this question is, my big, bold goal is... My big, bold goal is. Just 
place now. Look, like my sinuses are actually working this week. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm just not all you over here from the basket of doors. <laughs> okay, so the next part of this activity is I want you to take a look at everything that you answered. And I, if there's a if there's a common theme or maybe a word that, that is kind of the same, or maybe there's a similar thought going on. I want you to circle it. So if you see some kind of common theme in, the, in your answers, I want you to put a circle around those, you know, words that are similar. Or maybe the concept is the same, or maybe it's around the same kind of philosophy. So just circle anything that looks similar in your in your answers. Anybody see a common theme? So when we, when we go back to the earlier slide, your passion. So these are passion questions. They're questions to say, okay, what do I get really excited about? What, what really resonates within me? And so hopefully this exercise kind of started you down the path to say, okay, I think I kind of know what my tennis ball is. And then going forward, what you want to do is you want to think about, Okay, how do I take what I get really excited about and maybe marry it to my business or equate it to my business? So let's say, let's say your resounding theme was family. That you saw that a lot of your questions revolved around family. And you're thinking, you know what, my passion is my family. Well, there's a couple of different ways you could look at this business. This business could be a means to an end to be able to do things for your family that you never thought possible. And so because your family is your passion, that passion can drive your business. Maybe the flip side of that is that, you know, maybe my passion is my family, but maybe this business is actually bringing me closer to other people's families. And my goal, my passion is bringing families around the dinner table. And so I can really say the mission and vision of this company really plays right into my passion. So I think it's really good to kind of start with where you all are in your mindset and where you want to go, <clears throat> excuse me, going forward in your business. So I'm going to pass these around. I don't want you to look at them. I just want you to take one, keep it, keep it down. Those of you that are hanging out, um, I will send you this document after the call, but you'll be able to do the same exercise on a piece of paper that you have in front of you. Um, but I will send you uh, the paper. I'll get Christina <coughs> to get it to you. Thank you. So we know when we're really passionate about something, it's probably something that's, oh, thank you. It's probably something that's pretty innate to you, right? You, you're really passionate about something. Do you, do you feel like it's a core belief that you have when you're passionate? I like to kind of equate it to something else. Flip over your papers. For those of you who are streaming, you're going to see there's a picture of a t-shirt. I have a t-shirt. Oh, you have a t-shirt. We have a whole t-shirt. <laughs> oh, I have a half of Oh, that's good. <laughs> we have a whole t-shirt. Does anybody else have a half t-shirt? Yeah. Maria has a weird one. Okay, Maria. I don't know. <laughs> I just printed these off and thank you, Staples. <laughs> Staples rock. Staples rock. We don't even have one. Okay, so think about a vacation that you took. Where you were so excited, you were so in the moment, and you're like, I gotta have a t-shirt, right? I gotta go to the store, I gotta have the, you know, Las Vegas t-shirt, I gotta have the Punta Cana t-shirt, you know? The t-shirt that you can take home that every time you wear the t-shirt, what happens? You think about your time. You do, you think about your time. Or you were so excited that in the moment you wore you wanted to wear the t-shirt. So I wanna ask you all, what's on your t-shirt? What would you put on your t-shirt? If you had to design a t-shirt today that you want everyone to see, what are you really convicted about? What do you want people to know is your message or your passion or what really drives you? So I want you just to kind of jot down something that you would like to see 
or something you'd like to have on your t-shirt if you made your own t-shirt. I bet you know what's on my t-shirt. Be present. Hmm. How many of you are really struggling with this? Anybody? Yeah. Anybody but you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling because I'm... I want to write like happy life or helping others, but I don't know how to put that into words, uh -huh. like for a t-shirt. And so here's the thing. You may not even be able to really fully comprehend what you want your t-shirt to say right now. But my goal is at the end of this evening, you're going to get some clarity around where you really want to go, what you're really convicted <clears throat> about, what really makes you happy. You know, if I can, you know, here's the thing. We have the best trained field in the industry. We really do. Pamper Chef's got amazing training. We train you guys to death. We train the crap out of everybody, right? We love, we love to train you. But if I can just instill some belief and passion along with that training to where you are motivated and inspired and you know that you can move mountains, and then a couple of maybe concepts that you didn't think about before, well then when you can bring all of those things together, then you have a whole package. You're not just a skilled person or a trained person. Because here's the thing. When you think about belief, passion, skill, and will, you can take a brand spanking new consultant that has one day in this business, and I can put this person in front of this room, and they can rock the world if they're excited about what they're doing. They do not have to know all of the stuff, because and believe me, I've observed buku buku shows, lots and lots and lots of shows since I built Pamper Chef. And the reality is that that brand new consultant doesn't need to hold up the knife and say, it's the, you know, let me tell you the gauge of the steel of the blah, 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 and the temperature and little German men with little shoes made in a village. <laughs> Nobody cares, right? Right. But if I'm really, really excited. <laughs> true story. <laughs> true story. <laughs> <laughs> but. But if you can stand up there and say, I don't know how this knife is made, this is the most amazing stinking knife I've ever used in my life, right? That's how you get people to go along. And so that's my goal here tonight, is to kind of, to kind of share with you some concepts. So I wanted to start there, um, because I think that's where it all starts. Belief and passion. You all started this business, you all came for a reason, whether it was a means to an end to, for financial freedom. Maybe you wanted to be recognized for the work that you do. Maybe you wanted to be part of something bigger. Maybe you just wanted to have some fun or get out of the house or have some kitchen was empty. Your kitchen was empty. You want a product. <laughs> Absolutely. So you came in this business for a reason. But the reality is that unless you can continue to inspire yourself daily, you will not stay. Because truly, nobody goes, nobody gets up every morning and goes, oh my gosh, today's the day I get to clean the toilets. Right? Today's the day I get to sort socks, right? If it's drudgery, you know what I mean? I don't know too many people that do cartwheels, right? Oh my gosh, it's gonna be a great day, the toilets are gonna be clean. But if you can do something that gets you really excited, right? Well then you're gonna get up and do it. You guys are looking at me like I'm a Martian. No, I love it, <laughs> it's hilarious, it's true story. <laughs> so, you know, we don't learn from experience, we learn from reflecting on experience. And so the reality is though, whatever you, Whatever you feel about this business, you have some kind of ex experience in your life that you bring to it, right? So the goal is that, you know, as you move forward, I want you to be able to reflect on all the different things that bring you passion and bring you joy and say, you know what, this is how I'm going to take this experience, my life's experience, and bridge it to this business 
so that I can do things that I never did before. And it starts with you. You all, each, of, each and every one of you in this room, and each of you out there watching this, hopefully you can see this, this slide says you are the CEO of your own company, which is yourself. You are all the CEOs of your company, right? One of the biggest things in this business, whether you're trained, not trained, passionate, not passionate, is most of you have families, right? Most of you have other people that live with you or support you in some way, um, whether it be emotionally, financially, whatever, you're connected to them. But you are the CEO. And so from this point forward, if you want to really start looking at this as this is my business, a business that I'm really excited about, a business that I'm really passionate about, you're going to be able to move mountains. But that being said, every CEO of every single company has a board of directors, right? They have a board that they answer to, a board that really supports them in their efforts. So I want to ask all of you, who is on your board of directors? My husband. Your husband's on the board of directors, right? Because think about this. When you, when you start this business, most of you work this business out of your homes, right? So is it hard not to have your family around when you work in the business? Do, any, does, do anybody, does anybody in this room struggle and say, oh my gosh, I really struggle, Lisa, with work-life balance. Like, how do I put my, prioritize my family, this business? How do I marry the two? Sometimes I feel torn. Sometimes I feel frustrated. Anybody feel like that? The, the goal, I think they're in a pizza coma. <laughs> Nobody wants to admit it. Um, but the reality is, when you start thinking of your family as your board of directors, your entire business will change. Think about how you make this a family business instead of something you are doing. Does that make sense? You know, when I was in the field, when I, was in the, when I was in the field, I really looked at my family like they were part of the equation. They had to buy in. They had to be part, you know, if, if I wanted to earn an incentive, we were all earning incentive, right? What was their piece of the pie? And so think about this. Are you having board meetings with your board of directors? I'm going to say something really quick. Allison, um, you guys know Allison, she is trying to earn Atlantis, and her husband keeps doing push-ups because he's trying to get in shape for Atlantis, and he says, push-ups for Doris, push-ups for Doris. <laughs> so it's like this big joke in their house, you know, and even if she doesn't go to Atlantis, she wants to go to Austin, so... He's doing push-ups for Doris. That's awesome. So it's, it's a way to, in, yeah. It's a way to engage. It's a yeah. way to get everybody excited. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, are you, do you set a goal with, as a family, as or not even a family, let's say, okay, maybe my kids are grown. Maybe I'm on my own now. I guarantee you there's somebody that supports you. Mm -hmm. There's somebody that you rely on. We all rely on somebody to support us, whether it's, like I said, financially or emotionally. So do you all have a common goal? Because that can be huge. You know, many times in this business, um, I have directors who, who say to me, you know what, Lisa, I feel like my husband's fighting me every step of the way in this business. Or my kids are just like, Mom, we leave him for Jeff again. But what if you've really flipped that whole equation? What if you really sat down with your family and said, this is our family business? What do we all want out of this, out of this business? Now, you know, their goal, the Smith family board meeting, their goal is a family vacation. Now, it may not be an incentive trip that's earned because maybe you're not taking kids on the incentive trip, but your goal as a family is, okay, when I earn X amount of money, we all get to do something. So maybe two people are shooting for the incentive kit trip, your husband and, and wife are shooting for the incentive trip, but maybe the kids are all saying, okay, we're going to help mom with her business because when she earns the incentive trip, we're going to earn something too. We need to go to grandma's for a week. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, however you, however you want to spin it, but when everybody has a vested interest and they're all working together, it's hard for people to work against each other. And that's huge in this business because we, it's hard to take ourselves away from our family. That's why Brian gets me dishes. Exactly. So, you know, if you have kids, Maybe your daughter washes the dishes when you get home. 
Maybe the sun impacts the car or vice versa. Because girls don't always have to be the dishwashers. Boys can do that too. Um, you know, and I think about I think about my own son. So I have two boys. I have a 26 year old and 11 year old. And um, is that crazy or what? 20, 26, 11, and a, a five year old granddaughter. Um, and what's crazy though, I look back on my 26 year old son, who is now um, working, supervising a manager of a call center at J.P. Morgan Bank, Chase Bank. And the thing about that is, from a very early age, he was a part of my business. He was an administrative assistant for me. He made phone calls for me. He, from a very early age, really was had a vested part in the business. And what's really cool is when he was interviewing for jobs, he actually we actually put this stuff on his resume. And his his supervisor at the time he was interviewing him called me and said, "Okay, like I almost think he didn't really believe me." And I said, "You know what? This is a kid that, you know." When I was working for the American Red Cross for a period of time, made donor made calls to recruit blood donors. You know, helped me with my administrative, du you know, assistant duties when I was in the field working in direct sales. Mm -hmm. Helped me make calls. Went to my sales meetings with me and set up display tables. You know, he had such a, a wide range of experience. But here's the thing: they could not believe how amazing he was on the phone and how articulate he was at 26 years old to be able to deal with people that were far older than him. That's a skill because he was on my board of directors. <clears throat> so think not only what you're doing as a family collectively, but the amazing empowerment that you're giving your family, your children. It can be a huge, huge thing. So if you aren't saying, you know what, I have a board of directors, I really encourage you to think. I'm giving you food for thought. You know, How might that look in your own family unit? I don't know. You know, who supports you in your business and how do you work together to make the things happen that you all want? Any questions or comments or anything you guys want to share? I think it's questions? just all mind blowing. We're all just mind blown. Mind blown. <laughs> I take my six year old with me to vendor events. He loves passing out the cards. Hey, my mom sells paper jet. Here's a recipe. Would you like would you like an appetizer or a taste or a dessert? <laughs> or and, he's, <laughs> and he has to wear the apron and he's the pink one. He has to wear the pink one. I mean, he's like, mom, I want the pink one. I love that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because think about this. How, how many of you, I mean, here's the thing. What, one of the things that the supervisor said to me is we've interviewed a lot of young people and they do not have the skill set. They don't, they can't even articulate because they're so caught up in this. And so when you think about that, I, I think back to when Aaron was, I remember him like it was yesterday five years old at Montessori school saying, mom, this is my friend, Robert. Robert, this is my mom, shake hands. Now what five-year-old does that? A five-year-old that's raised in a different kind of environment that, you know, right. really is empowered to think, to think independently. And so when I think about, that's really cool. He, he loves it. And he he has, has a, I had team shirts made up. He says, mom, you have to get me a shirt now. I'm on your team. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there's your board yeah. director. Yeah. So I think you need to have Baker Board of Directors. Oh yeah, you know, it says Nate. Yeah. I think it's also <laughs> really cool though because like it, ever since I started, I would as soon as I right before I get out of the post driveway, I'm calling my husband, and he would always say, "Okay, how many people are there? How much in sales? <laughs> how many people joined your team? How many bookings did you get?" And it was just, it, it's just how we. It's just what we do. I don't know. It's, it's crazy. amazing. Well, it's and when he doesn't answer, I'm so bummed because I'm like so excited. You, you want know? to share? Yeah. It's a partnership, Christina. It's a partnership. I, I love to hear Becky. She's, she's a national executive director. She talks about how Bob would meet her in the garage and say, okay, how many recruits, how many bookings, just like Christina's mm -hmm. husband. What a great accountability partner. Talk about somebody okay. being all in on your board of directors. Right. You know? You know, when, when my husband comes home for work at the end of the day, he's okay, how many coaching calls did you have? And how many lives did you change today? And did you do good yeah. things? I mean, those are the things that when your whole family buys into that, it's an amazing thing. You're now not saying, oh my gosh, I can't do this because they're going to feel like they're slighted. You're all working together. And the beautiful thing is the family that works together, what do, what do they get to do together? Play together. They together. play together. So you work hard, you play hard. And when you start thinking, teaching that work ethic at an early age, because you all, I can coach you to the business, but you're not just a business. Your wives and husbands and family people and sisters and brothers and aunts and uncles. 
And, and so you have to look at the whole picture. If I just say, oh my gosh, we have to do this, 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 and this, the reality is my goal is to help you be able to balance. Because I know when you have when you have that balance, you're gonna stay. You're gonna stay in this business and it's gonna become a beautiful thing. So failure. You know, many times we think about and I'm just throwing out random concepts tonight. This is not there's just these are just random concepts. We're just kind of worth it. So here's the thing. Failure isn't falling down, it's remaining where you fall. How many times has something not gone your way and you feel like you're paralyzed? You can't even put one foot in front of the other. And so when you think about it, failure isn't falling down, it's remaining where you've fallen. Are you failing forward? Are you saying, you know what, this is a business that has ups and downs, and there are going to be downs, and there are going to be ups, and I, you, and I just have to get used to it, right? You just have to get your head around it, because I love this. You know, are you failing forward? Are you taking the missteps that you have and saying, you know what, that's just getting me closer to where I want to go. It's giving me a frame of reference. It's giving me experience. I'm... I'll tell you, the failures that you have, the missteps that you all have, make you better coaches and better leaders. Anybody agree? Anybody disagree? You can disagree. I love a good debate, right? But think about it. The more that you can experience life fully, the better leader and coach and mentor you'll be. I couldn't sit up here and work and partner with all of you and, and be in the field as much as I am without saying, you know what, I've had my fair share of times where I've fallen flat on my face. I know how it is. It's not funny. You get up and you've got two black eyes and, you know, it's not fun. But, you know, I, I don't want you to worry about feeling. I, don't, I want you to worry about never trying. Mm -hmm. That's not <laughs> you know, worry about never trying, because that's where you want to be. You want to you want to be fearless. You want to be fearless about the changes that you want to enact. So I love these guys. These are my famous failures. Beethoven. You know, Beethoven. You know, was deaf. They said he would never do anything. I mean, Beethoven. Are you kidding me? I mean, goodness. What about Abraham Lincoln? I think he was. Fired, he lost how many elections, was fired so many times, lost his job, holy guacamole. Thomas Edison, I think once he said, I had, I've had six, I had 6,000 failures before I invested the light bulb. 6,000 times he screwed, you know, it didn't work. How many of you, on time six, would have given up? Yeah. <laughs> 6,000. That's conviction, right? And... Thank goodness he tried 6,000 times or we would be sitting here in the dark. <laughs> that would be no fun. True story. But what about Walt Disney? I love this one. Walt Disney, they actually, when he came out with the concept of Mickey Mouse, the executives in the studio that he worked for said, that will never fly with women because women are afraid of mice. <laughs> nice. They told him he didn't even have any imagination. <laughs> are you kidding me? I mean... <sighs> Steven Spielberg dropped out of school, struggled with learning disabilities. And then, of course, Michael Jordan, cut from his freshman basketball team. Wouldn't you love to be that coach? But the reality is, hey, the reality hey, is when you look at when you look at these, these individuals, the failures that they had actually forced them to get momentum and enact change, right? So Michael Jordan, when he was cut from the freshman basketball team, do you think he went out and worked harder? Yeah. What about Walt Disney? When somebody said he didn't have imagination, do you think he really listened to him? He made Pluto. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not. So this is pretty amazing when you think about it. So when you're struggling, when you have your ups and downs, you know, do you use it as a frame of reference to say, you know what, now I now I'm gonna go forward and it's gonna be even better than it was before. Because you're gonna have you're gonna have the downs. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'd love for all of you to have a cakewalk through life, but the reality is it's not going to happen. Um, I'm going to flip through this because I don't want to go here yet. 
So here, just pretend you don't see any of this. Ah, okay. Um, okay. Nope, 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 nope. Just pretend you don't see any of this. La, 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 la. Okay. I want to get to my present. Okay. So, Christina, um, <laughs> perfect with this, with this one. Yeah, girl. Because this right here will be on my t-shirt. Yep. Be present. Um, some of you heard heard me speak about being present. I'm going to share a little bit about it tonight, but I really want to talk. I want really want to share with you some of the things that happened this week too. But being present is the most amazing thing that you can ever do in your entire life, in relationship to any business or anything you get in anything. And the reality is, um, many years ago, for those who have not heard this story, for those of you who have, just bear with me. But many years ago, um, I went to see a philanthropist in my hometown speak because he was 97 years old at the time. And I thought, this guy is like, he's built like half of the town. And I want to see what this guy has to say, right? Because he's a smart guy. So I went and listened to him speak and it blew me away. Just one single thing that he said. And he talked for a long time because he liked to talk. And when he, when he said this, I was just like, I, I could almost not catch my breath. He said, it wasn't until I was 93 years old that I was present in my own life. I knew a lot of people, but I didn't know a lot of people. I was like, wow. Now, it was shortly after this that um, a very good friend of mine was tragically killed. And in going to her calling hours, <clears throat> it was amazing. There was a line of people, you know, outside of the funeral home, all standing in line to talk, you know, to her family. And as I talked to different people, it, it like connected back to, to what I had heard, you know, previously about, I knew a lot of people, but I didn't know a lot of people. Every single person in that line thought they were her best friend. Actually, they didn't think they were her best friend. They knew. They were her best friend. Well, she's my best friend. I, I met her here. Now, I'm thinking she's my best friend too. I mean, we had grown up together. We lived in the same neighborhood. We played together as kids. I'm thinking, well, I knew her too, right? I thought she was my best friend too. And I really started thinking, that's a gift. That's a gift where every person that you meet thinks you were their best friend or that they're your best friend. Mm -hmm. And so it was interesting because at that point in time, I thought, wow, if I died tomorrow, would all of those people line up around the block and say that, they, that I was there? Or would they even know anything about me? Because here's the deal. I would come home after traveling and my husband would be like, oh my gosh, did you know about this? Oh, there's a couple down the street. They're having an affair and they're doing this. And he always knew. I, mean, I couldn't pick my neighbors out of a police lineup, right? <laughs> you know, I'd drive in, I'd be like, you know, low profile. Because I'm, you know, I'm traveling, zipping's about. Todd knows everybody, knows everybody. And I'm thinking, I am like so not living my life. I'm driving through my life. I'm driving through my life. So at that point in time, I decided that for six months, I was not going to drive anywhere, drive through anywhere in my life. I was going to walk through my life. So I want you to think about this. Do you drive through your life or do you walk through your life? Are you present in every situation that you can be present in? Because here's the thing. Are you, um, I'll, just, I'll just give you an example. Um, let me go back to this. You're in the grocery store and you've got your cart. And there was a period of time where I'm in the grocery store and I'm like singularly focused, right? I'm in there, I've got a mission, 10 things in the cart, in and out, nobody gets hurt, 20 minutes, right? Right. So I'm in the car, I'm in the grocery store, I'm driving, you know, in the car, and I'm like, people would literally go, smile to me, to me. And I'm like, I'm like really happy. I don't, I'm not sad. Why do you want me to smile? But I must have looked so secretly focused, or I might be in the grocery store because I'm on a mission, and then I see Kevin. I'm like, oh man, Kevin doesn't shut up. So, <laughs> so, so then I got my cart, and I'm like, there's Kevin get into the next aisle because I don't want to have a conversation with Kevin because he never stops talking. 
Anybody I like showed that? you that in my grocery store. <laughs> <Anybody do that? laughs> okay, so are you are you walking through or driving through? So it got to the point. The big catalyst for me was the fact that I realized that I was in, in the dry cleaner two, three times a week, every week. Sarah at the dry, Sarah the girl at the dry cleaning counter said, "Hey, hello, how's the weather?" Very superficial, and she was like always so upbeat and positive. But I didn't, I didn't even know anything about her because I was so focused. Give me my dry cleaning. I got, I got bigger places to go, bigger people to see. So I just decided that the next time I went in there. I said this. I said, Sarah, you are the most upbeat, positive person in the world, and I don't know anything about you. And I'm really sorry about that. And that's how it all started. And she's a friend of mine today, and we do, and we do coffee, and I want you to think about that. Are you present? Are you focused in the moment? Because here's the one thing that I can share with you. When you are in this business, you have to be present. You have to be focused. You know, for, for many years, I, I trained managers in the field, and I would, would help them go out prospecting, and I'd listen to their conversations, and they would be like formulating what their next answer was going to be. So if I was talking to Hillary, I might say, so gosh, what are you doing here? And Hillary might be talking, and I could tell they weren't listening. And so I started saying, you know what? What's, tell me three things that you just learned about that person. And they go, well, they could usually tell me the name and then nothing else. If you are really present in that moment and you have a real conversation with someone that is just out of sincerity and purity of heart, you will be able to walk away and tell me three things about that person mm -hmm. in the conversation. And if you can't do that, then you're not present. And consequently, what happens is when you're not present, you're not growing your network. Right? Good, so, Lisa, it's good. <laughs> so if you're in the grocery store and you're texting, and you're like this, you're not present. You're not opening yourself up to, to different people. This is what I want to see. Now, for those of you that are like, oh, come on, Lisa, ten, I, I only got 10 minutes. You can control this conversation. I can't tell you how many times, and I've done it myself. Have you ever done this? Oh my gosh, there's Kevin. He doesn't shut up, but I'm going to talk to him. And then Kevin starts talking, and then I start talking, and then I'm talking as much as Kevin is, and then when we leave, I go, Kevin, I'm like, just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but I was talking too, right? Yeah. But now poor Kevin gets the blame because he's just conversing back and forth. <laughs> you control the conversation. You can actually set you can actually set the tone and say, you know what? Oh my gosh, Maria. Oh my gosh, it's so great to see you. Oh, I'd love to catch up. I have just a few minutes before I pick the kids up from school. You've already set the expectation you have just a few minutes. You share a couple of pleasantries, you ask her a couple of questions, you you're sincere and you have you know, you're totally in the moment, and then you say, and then you put your hand on Maria's arm and you say, gosh, it was so great to see you, but now I've got to go pick up my kids. Boom, boom, you're done. Right? Or you can sit there and whine, oh, Maria, stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh my gosh, you know, oh, I'm not even listening. I have to get my kids. There's toilets. <laughs> or you can be present. So let me tell you what, let me tell you what present looks like. So this week in Atlanta. I went prospecting with a group of consultants. And what I typically do when I talk to people is after I talk to them, I, I leave and I type notes in my phone of the person that I met. So, okay. So, in, at, in the Origins store, in the Origins store, you um, you? yes, of course oh. I did. And here's the amazing thing. <laughs> so I took, so I took Tammy, one of, one of, um, the the consultants in Atlanta with me. I took different different people with me at different times of the day. So Tammy and I went into Origins, and here's the, and here's the thing. When I walked into the Origins store, I just thought, you know, I need to be in this moment. I need to be present. And what was amazing about that store, what I was blown away by, is the fact that they had a table with hot chocolate and tea and like teacups. And it was like really cool. And I thought, this is like amazing customer service in the Origins store. I mean. 
This is makeup. And I get to pick out whatever hot chocolate I want or whatever tea. There was all kinds of teas. And I just simply said to the, to the clerk, I said, this is like exceptional. This is amazing customer service. I can honestly not tell you where it went from there because I was in the moment. But what I ended up finding out is that our clerk's name was Einar. She was from Istanbul, Turkey. She used to be the manager of a Lancome store, but then she also was certified in math and Christian Dior. In, while she was in Istanbul, Turkey, she was a, an amazing cook. And so when she came to, to live in New Jersey, which is where they came right after Istanbul, she actually did a Turkish cooking show on Turkish television. What? She totally believes in car. I know. She did, did, tur did a cooking show in Turkish on the Turkish television channel in New Jersey. Wow. She totally believes in karma and felt like I was brought there for a reason that day. She's an artist. She has, her mother has cancer. And she is totally interested in partnering with Paper Chef and doing cooking. And so we got her name over her number by being present in the moment. Wow. Amazing. I'll do another one. Origins called me today because they're having a customer appreciation. There you go. I'm going to say. So then we went in to the Yankee Candle store, which to me is a religious experience. If you've never been in Yankee Candle, it's a religion. And I was showing Tammy because Tammy had never been in Yankee Candle, for goodness sakes. So we went into Yankee Candle and we met Devin Evans, who was exceptional because I had asked her, I needed to ask her some questions. I had some questions about some sconces that I bought for some candles that I have in craft. And she was amazing. Devin is 34. She is newly married. She doesn't cook, but she's learning. She's worked at Yankee Candle for three years, and she also works at the Outlet Mall, where she is building her kitchen with kitchen products from the Kitchen Collection Store. Uh. She has tons of friends for a party, and she really wants to build all of her kitchen tools. Okay, I'm just telling you guys. What questions you did you ask? Like, it's just, just a conversation. It's just a conversation. Wow. Now, did every conversation turn to the things that, that bridge? No. It doesn't have to. You Does every conversation have to turn to paper chat? Absolutely not. I would be upset with each and every one of you if you tried to. Because if you try to make every conversation about the business, you are, manipula you are manipulating the conversation, and you're not in the moment, and you're not being genuine. Mm. It's, it's about you and not about them. And so I want you to think about it. I, you know, when we walked away, and I've got a whole little list of people that we talked to and names and numbers and contact information. But the reality is that there were there were girl there were a couple of girls that I'm just like, you know what? Well we met we met a girl at an accessory store and um and that was I forget who was with Jenny. Jenny was with me. And we were talking to Tracy in the accessory store. And what I was really amazed with is she had the most gorgeous curly hair. I said, you never know it, Tracy, but I have curly hair too. And I want hair just like yours, but I flat iron mine. And then she was giving me hair tips and telling me to stay away from product. We had this very long discussion about hair product. What? And Jenny is just like, but well, you have to be in the moment. It's just starting a conversation. And here's the thing. When you, I want you to think about this. If I see Hillary in the store, and I'm talking to Hillary, and I am standing, static, and we're having a conversation, how does Hillary feel? She might feel a little uneasy. She's got to converse with me. But if Hillary's in the store and I'm having a conversation with Hillary and the whole time I'm talking to her, I'm going about my shopping. I'm looking at things. I'm holding clothes out. I'm just talking. Like I would if Christine and I were shopping in the loft, right? We're just having a conversation. Do you feel like that that is more in the moment? Because my goal is I want to shop. I want to look and see. Right. The best thing you can do is run your errands and say, you know what? I'm going to run my errands. I bought a couple of things that day, and of course they asked me, oh my gosh, do you buy something in every store you go? And I said, no, not unless I have a reason to buy something. I didn't buy anything in the origin store. I didn't buy anything in Yankee Candle. Couldn't fit it in my suitcase, or I probably would have. Um, but it's all about being present and, and just being in the moment, not really having the conversation saying, okay, so tell me about you. Or do you want to do this? And then the person's like, okay, I feel like I'm being interview right yeah you're in the moment you're talking just like you would be if you were talking to your girlfriends or your guy friends and it's so low pressure but you want to be there every single thing that you're doing when you're present is sincere it's genuine yeah it's not bs 
These are things that you just do because you want to have a conversation with someone. So I've said all this. Now I want, I want your comments. I want to know where your minds are going when I'm, when I'm saying this stuff. Now you're all just looking at me like I have 10 heads. I just like really have to say this because this is so neat. And Kaya can vouch for me. I can go anywhere and I must have this thing on my face that says, I need to talk to you. <clears throat> Random people just come up and they just start talking. Talk, talk, talk. I'm that person that doesn't listen. I'm like in my head going, I have 15 minutes to get this, 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 this. Can you just please? And I'll say to Kaya, duck, because there's one of my customers. I, I'm not paying attention. I'm just like, we're on a mission. And then if she slaps back, I say, step it up. You got to go. Mm -hmm. But everybody wants to stop and talk. And it's like, I don't know you. So now I need to, I'm listening to you. I need to refocus of how I stop and pay attention to what these people, what they're all missed opportunity as well. It's, that's what I'm years. saying. It's, 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 a, it's, it's the wildest revelation. And I'm going to be honest because I am, I am a very impatient person. I am the most impatient person you'll ever find in your entire life. I get, I'm like driving, it's like, keep trying to get out of my way. I mean, you know, I want my stuff done when I want my stuff done. But the reality is, I felt like for the longest time I was living in chaos mode. Has anybody ever felt like that? You're just like, oh, everything's so, yeah. oh, great. Mm -hmm. And when I actually took a step back and said, you know what, I'm going to be more present, I'm going to be in the moment, I could not believe how, how calm. There's, there's a peace that comes with it. And I'm not going to tell you that you're going to get everywhere speedy quick, but you're going to feel a lot better doing it. And the more that you have, the more that you're present and you have those conversations, the better you get at having conversations. And one of the things that I see a huge area of opportunity for us as a collective sales force is that you all have an amazing, you have a, you have a group of people a captive audience at every show that loves the products and I don't see you even being present there like you could be right to really close the deal on recruiting to close the deal on selling to close the deal and we can talk about that in a minute but 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 even aside from that we also collectively when when I so so when I take when I when I'm not prospecting with groups I, I let them kind of go first I want to see, excuse me, how they're conversing with people. And it's the same old, same old. It's, and many times it might be because they're trying to impress me. Like, you know, oh my gosh, you are so stinking cute. I need you to be on my team just because you're cute. Or, oh my gosh, you know, you look so amazing. Or, do you like to cook? Or, they what's in that? your heart? I mean, yeah, I mean, that's so awkward. <laughs> so the thing about it is, or, or they start off with pleasantries, and then they quickly try to turn the conversation to pamper job and force it, right? Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. When you have a relationship with someone, here's the thing. People will do business with you, and they can answer yes to three questions, right? Can she help me or he help me? Can I trust them, and do we build a relationship? Until they can answer yes to those three questions, they may or may not want to do anything with you. And the reality is, the reason we have cancellations in this business, the reason people don't show up to parties, the reason people don't call you at the last minute and cancel is because you've not built a relationship. Mm -hmm. Friends don't cancel from friends, right? Mm -hmm. Strangers cancel from strangers. If you, if, I, if you helped me and I can trust you and we built a relationship, well, even if I've had a bad day and I'm thinking about wanting to cancel, I probably won't, right? Because I'll be like, well, that's so I was thinking about canceling, but gosh, I don't want to let Maria down. She was so great. And so that's the difference. Mm -hmm. And until we can get really good at building relationships with people, and sometimes 
you know, sometimes we rush the relationship. Don't rush the relationship. Do you get married in a minute and a half when you meet somebody? Some of you might. I don't know. <laughs> Some of you run to Vegas, the first person you meet. Right? Um, but the reality is, more often than not, if it takes a conversation or two to start talking about the business, what typically happens if I built a relationship? So Kevin and I, are we met each other. We, we had a really great conversation. Now, time two, we meet. What typically happens in that second or third conversation? You start to ask some questions about things you already know about. Yeah, like, hey, so Kevin, you know what? What do you do for a living? Oh, let me tell you what I do, right? It's just letting things progress naturally and not necessarily forcing it. Now, there's also going to be that flip side of that. How many of you have ever been at a party and you've met somebody and you've been like immediately like fast friends in 10 minutes because everything just clicked, right? So there's going to be those times where you can immediately get, get bridge to the business, build that bridge. But what I'm saying is I really want you guys to get good at feeling like when you're, because when you're in the moment and you're really present, that's when things happen. What do you want to watch on Gina, Mr. <laughs> any, any other, any comments? Any? I feel like I'm um, twofold on, on part of the, what you said, going to the grocery store and people have to stop you and say, smile, it's not that bad, you know, and you're just, and, and you're thinking, do I look that upset? And I was just like, that's me all the time because I, I must look that upset. And I'm not. And but then on the flip side, my husband is like, Yeah, you're so happy. I know, I know. And so <laughs> my husband also, he's like, You can talk to anybody. How do you do that? But I don't, you know, he's like, Why didn't you get their name? Or why didn't you get their number? He's like, He's like, uh, When we, our hometown was Kansas City, he's like, You must know almost all of Kansas City the way I would talk to people. As a, I've lived here for 30 years. I mean, I, I see people. I should know them. He goes, but you almost know everybody. It's like, no, sir, I don't know everybody. But I, I can talk to them. But I never I never took the extra step to know them more, I guess. Mm -hmm. I only knew them by either by face or, you know, something that they did. That's why 10, 10, 10 can come in and be so helpful for you, Maria. You know, there's an activity called 10, 10, 10 that really helps you become more present, to become more in, in, into your mask. Um, and so it's really, just, it's really just taking a piece of paper and dividing it in thirds, three columns. It's really dividing that paper in thirds. So, the, so you've got three columns, you number it one to ten. So it's just three, you know, try pull the paper. The top of the first column, it's... Where do I go? It's as simple as that. Where do I go? The next one is who do I see? And the next column is what do I know? Do that once a month. Mm -hmm. Good for you. So where, it's where do I go? Who do I see? What do I know? And the beautiful thing is your goal every week is to go to 10 places, 10 places, 10 activities where you're going to be in front of people. So it might be that my first place is my son's soccer game. So I list soccer game. Maybe I list pickup line at school. Maybe I list hairdresser. Maybe I list doctor's office. <coughs> Maybe one of my other things is pamper check party that hopefully is going to be on one of your 10. But you're doing a party that week. And then that second column is who do I see at those places? Well, the pickup line, I see the lady with the red hair. I don't know her name. I never talked to her, but I know she's in the pit. I see her every stinking morning. So you put lady with the red hair. That's all you have to do. At your paper check party, it might be a question mark, because I don't know who I'm going to meet yet. Your goal is to find out one thing about each of those people that you didn't know before. And when you can start doing that on a regular basis, <laughs> you will start to become more present more present in your life. You'll start to open yourself up to, first of all, you'll start putting yourself in enough situations where you'll meet more people and be more intentional about the way you do it. Um, but you'll be able to be more present. Does that make sense? Yeah, because I've learned from various trainings 
You should be able to come out of the situation knowing more about them than they know more about you. Hallelujah, Maria! <laughs> Absolutely. The reality is, you know, our goal when, we, when I was prospecting this week, and I'm just using this week as an example because that's where I just came from. When we were prospecting this week, the goal was that I told them we got to walk away knowing three things. And in most cases, I had 10, 15, 20 things about each person. And then I would have the girls, they'd be standing up, they're like, well, can we just watch you? And then they'd be standing off to the side, and then I'd, we'd leave the store, and I'd say, okay, what did we just learn about her? And they'd start rattling off, and I'd start rattling off, and by the time we were done, we had a list of things. And the reality is, was it a three-minute conversation? No, it wasn't. You will know, I just want you to get, get good at being in the present so that you know that you just have an innate instinct of when to stop talking and when to start talking. You know, I know I can start reading body language. If I'm talking to somebody and then they start going, oh, well, then I know it's probably time to hit the road. Or with our Tracy friend at, um, at Persona um, Accessories, she, she loved, you know, she loved the idea of Pampered Chef, but she said, I can't do anything on the floor because her vulture boss was there. Well, here's the thing. I know that for somebody to do business with me too, I have to leave them with a good feeling about me and the Pampered Chef. And if I'm aggressive and her boss gets mad at her, is she going to have a good feeling about either one of us? Uh-uh. But we built a relationship and my goal is that I'm going to, you know, get somebody to reconnect with Tracy because she was interested, you know, but they can, they can get her off at a different time. And, you know, and I just, and here's the thing. So when I was out, I brought some season's best cookbooks with me. And when at the, at the Jonathan at the sunglass hut, who was just amazing. And he had been in the military and he was in the national guard and just was so cool. I'm like, you know what? I just want you to have this recipe book. It's been just a real pleasure talking to you today. Do I really want anything for it? No. I brought some recipe cards. So he's ready to go to the mall. <laughs> and I, typically, I typically put different things in my bag. I always have my little bag of tricks. So I have some season's best, some recipe cards, um, my little trifold, you know, interview card, you know, like my business card, um, and mini catalogs. And it's just, I just feel, whatever I feel at the time is what I end up passing off. If someone's given me exceptional customer service and we have had, I mean, like I think of Devin Evans in the Yankee Candle, I will never forget. And I literally went to Yankee Candle and went onto their website and said, what an amazing, amazing employee they have this girl. You know, when someone gives you that except customer service to that nth degree that just knew so much about the products and could help me troubleshoot an issue that I was having, it was just wonderful and engaged. You want to be able to pay that forward. And that's what being present means. So we, we know how to control the conversation. We talked about that. Um, but I want to go back to an area of opportunity. I'm flipping through the things again. I, I will say really quick, um, like when I do go, especially at a show, you know, your phone is always on silent or vibrate. And like when I do, most of the time my phone is on vibrate because if I'm out and about talking to somebody, I don't want it to interrupt me. You know what I mean? So, like, now that I have my watch, I do put it on Do Not Disturb a lot because it, I don't want it to distract me. And it, it's totally, it's being in the moment. I get it. You have to. You know, and that's a great point, Christina. You have to. You know, when we were out together, I turned my phone on silent. I don't want to be distracted. I need to be present in the moment and and in that case, it was a twofold because not only did I want to be present in the moment for the people that I was meeting, but I wanted to be present in the moments for those that I was coaching, that I was spending time with, that they were getting to be able to see. And it also works like at your house. Like that's why most of the time I turn my phone off at nine o'clock because if I'm sitting here on the couch watching a movie and I'm on my phone the whole time, well, what is that really? You know, it's my husband's like, what the hell? You know, he's not. So it's totally both sides of it. I know when you all have balance, you will stay longer in this business. You know, you can say, you can always get another job, but you can't get another family. Well, you could get another family, but it's not much fun. But the reality is, what if you can have the best of both worlds and you stay 
it's all great. And you know, Lisa, that's I think what I need to learn to do because my job, I'm there 10 hours to 12 hours a day. So I'm up till one o'clock in the morning doing my pamper check. I cook them home and I cook them a meal. I give but now that you all are saying this, I don't focus on them like you. Right. I don't set a limit of, okay, I, this time I'm done. Yeah, set a timer. You know? Yeah. So you know, I have never, now that you've said, I've noticed, you know, they're texting me now to get my attention. <laughs> This is really good. <laughs> you know, you know, here's, here's I'm thing. getting a lot of feedback, by the way, from our Zoomers or our chat or hangout people. Uh, there's three or four of them on there, and they're they, I checked my phone when I was outside, and they're all agreeing with everything we're all saying. Oh, good, good, good. I'm yeah. so glad. I'm so glad. Yeah, here's what I want you to think about. Um, there was a time, there was a time when I was so not present for my family that it was unbelievable. There was a time when I would be thinking, oh my gosh, would you just, I'd walk in the door and I'd be thinking to myself, would you just stop talking? Because I wanted to decompress. Or let me see how fast I can read this chapter in the book so that you go to sleep so that I can go do what I need to get done. And those are years you, you cannot get back. And you will regret it, you will so regret it. And I have to look, I have, you know, I love my boys, but I am a totally different mother from my 11 year old than I was my 26 year old. I am totally different. You know, I've coached my kids to be independent. My kids are very independent people. You know, so there's some of the similarities, but as far as actually being present and being focused and being focused in the moment, um, and, and when, when my eldest son came home from college one weekend with his friends, and I was that mom that was, that did amazing, I felt like I did these amazing things. You know, that was my way of rationalizing it. Oh, I'm just, I'm so creative. When, okay, it's your birthday party, birthday, I'm gonna take this rowboat and put cardboard and build it into a pirate ship and bring sand into the backyard where we're having a Pirates of the Caribbean party. And we're gonna build the, the, um, the lava cake that has the, for the dinosaur, we're doing a dinosaur dig and the cake is going to have dry ice and it's going to be like the volcano. And I mean, carnival booths in the backyard for, you know, a carnival party. Every year it was this amazing party. Every year it was an amazing vacation. While they were at the beach, mom was in the hotel room on the computer. While they were doing things, I was rushing through everything so that I, and then the carnival booths, are, and I'm on the phone talking about work while the party's going on. But I just knew, I kind of knew when my son came home from college one weekend and we were just, I was kind of cocky. I thought, you know, he's had a lot of really cool things in his life. He's been in a lot of amazing experiences for a young kid. I said, so Aaron, what is the best memory you have of your childhood? Full well knowing it was going to be one of the amazing things. That, and this is what he said. It was the time you took me to the Kahiki to dinner. It was just you and I. It was a restaurant. Now, granted, it was a really cool Polynesian restaurant that we were in a hut. They had dancers, and you could have blown me away. You could have blown me away. And I thought, this is crazy. It doesn't matter. All this stuff doesn't matter. It's it's being in that moment, having those conversations. And I started thinking, you know what? The time I have a five year old at home, I got I and he's going to be in the same boat. You know, twenty, you know, whatever, eighteen years from now. So. Here's the thing, you can be present, you can be in the moment, but I know you will stay with this business if I can help you get balance. If I can help you be present in the moment, start conversations that build your network, and you have this exponential network of people, and you're loving life, and there's no chaos, and you're, you see where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. You're gonna stay. So what's our time now? Oh. Okay, so we have a little bit of time. Okay. So one of the things that I want to talk about next, and we can kind of, kind of go back, and all of this, you know, like I said, I'm just going to whirlwind just concepts at you, and hopefully it'll start a conversation. Best practices. This is an area of opportunity for some of you in the business. Um, best practices, what I like about best practices is that when you have a standard set of 
of concepts around anything that you do. They help you to be competitive. They help you to know your baseline. Because the reality is, let me give you an example. If I know that best practices um, for cleaning Christina's hardwood floors, so is that we don't put lemon pledge on her hardwood floors, because if we do, we're going to fall right on our butt the next time we walk. The, the best practices that you use, you know, Murphy's oil, Murphy's oil something, or you use, you know, know hardwood floor <laughs> cleaner. That's the best practice for cleaning floors. That's how I know, you know, everything goes forward because that's that's the best practice. Now, if I know the best practice for cleaning Christina's hardwood floors is that we use Murphy's oil soap, well, now I know that I can actually be competitive against maybe. So now I say, okay, I'm going to start a floor cleaning business. Why do everybody uses Murphy's oil soap to clean their hardwood floors? Well, what can I do? to kind of stay above the competition. So once you know what you're supposed to do in any given business, you'll know your baseline and you'll be able to increase all the things that are relative to the business. Here's what I find. You all start with a baseline show. It's that very simple show concept that Pamper Chef trains everybody to do. And then over time, you go to trainings like this, you go to conference, you go to Susie Q's retreat, you go to this team meeting and you start adding stuff to the baseline, right? Mm -hmm. Now you have a show that's a mishmash of all these different things. And then stuff starts to go awry. It doesn't work anymore. And you go, oh my gosh, my entire show stinks. And the reality is though, that if you just took the baseline show, so I, I love baselines because we all have a baseline. There's baseline tests. Like I always say, we all have a, if you're a girl, you have a woman, you have a mammogram. That's your baseline. All other mammograms in your lifetime are measured against the baseline, right? That's how you know if something changes. Well, if you have a baseline show, I know what my basic show is. When I add something to that show and I focus on just one or two things at a time and then I see how that works for me, and if it doesn't work, then I know where I can go back. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But if I just keep adding stuff, and then over time something starts to go awry, I don't really know what changed. So when we start with best practices, which would be that baseline show, which is a very basic show concept that we all start with, it helps us to just kind of have a frame of reference for everything. And it also really helps us to be innovators because if we know where the baseline is, we know maybe what tweaks we can make to make it grow even faster. So in the course of our business, we have a best practice that we call 321, right? Everybody knows 321? Gotcha. So we know that that's our success plan. If we're following 321, we know that we're going to have a successful business. That's the baseline. So with 321, it's three contacts a day, it's two shows a week, no matter what, and it's one recruit a month. When you're doing all of those things well, then you're having a snowball that's rolling downhill. It's gaining momentum. If you're not doing those things, well, then that's where you start struggling. Everybody got that line? Let's take a picture. Gotcha? Okay, good. So two shows a week no matter what. Two shows a week no matter what is the baseline for shows. So when you're holding two shows a week, you're getting in front of enough people that you're going to get more bookings. You're going to get in front of enough people so that you get recruits. Everything starts happening. Now, some of you are going to say, you know what, Lisa, I don't have time for two shows a week no matter what. I, I get that, and that's okay, because you are, guess what? You're the CEOs of your business, and, you're, and I'm okay with that. But the reality is that we know when you want to have real growth in your business, it's three, two, one. So you just have to decide at some point what the growth is. Three contacts a day. What's a contact? Talking to an actual Person. Hooray! <laughs> that is not picking up the phone and leaving a message. That is not wishing the person on the other end, you know, was there. It's not texting. It's not texting. It's not an email. It's actually a conversation where you say hello and I say hello and we both answer each other. How cool is that? We conversate. Yes, we conversate. Is that a word? No, it's a Christina word. <laughs> I like it. I Converse. <laughs> and when you are having two shows a week and three contacts a day, you'll get a recruit month. Because you all have people in, that you're getting in front of. But there are a couple of different um, ways that you can amp that up. 
We also don't work to minimums. So if you really want to grow your business, then you're not going to do three, two, one. You might do, you know, four, three, two, or something. Make make things a little bit bigger so that you can get more out of it. So here's our cooking show best practices. This can be an eye opener for some of you. You keep your demonstration under 45 minutes. Anybody going over 45 minutes on their demonstration? Mm -mm. You give guests, some of you are, not in this room maybe, but I was just at a show not too long ago, it was several hours. Um, holy. Give guests plenty of opportunities to talk and spend time with one another. You get people involved with the products throughout the show and then you use a full service checkout to invite each guest to explore the business or host a show. So, interesting. Right? When you say demonstration, <laughs> let's go back. <laughs> when you say demonstration, is that like the whole thing? Like the second you open your mouth, welcoming everybody to, we take check, check charge and cash? What do you think it is? I think it should be. Okay. That's what I thought. When you're talking, 45 minutes, does, does, the, sta does the station show take that long? Mm -hmm. I don't, you guys are the CEOs of your business. It depends on what you're doing. That's absolutely right, Hillary. <laughs> so if you're making 25 recipes, and the host is telling you what to make, and the tail is wagging the dog, mm -hmm. tell the dog that you're going to wag the tail now. You're the dog. You're wagging the tail. The These are the recipes you. I offer. Yeah. You know, I, I was actually coaching a very long-time director um, yesterday who really struggled. I mean, she said, I got to do this because the host went. I said, who's the business owner? Okay, I would love, okay, so let me give you an example. I love the Hallmark card store. I love cards. I love green cards. I love to buy green cards. They're expensive. You know what I mean? You can spend a lot of money on green cards. <laughs> so what if I went into the Hallmark cards, the Hallmark card store the next time I went in, and I picked like 15 cards. I brought them up to the counter. And I said to the clerk, okay, so here's how this is going to go down today. These two cards are going to be free. These cards are 30% off, and I want half off of these cards. Oh. And that's what I want. What do you think they're going to do? Bye. You can get they're going to look at me like I'm a Martian and probably turn their back on me. But the host tells you I want this, 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 and this. And you guys go, okay. I bet if the host said she wanted 50% off, some of you would do that. Hmm. I want fifty percent off for all my guests. Oh, I don't really want to. It makes okay. me even think about like when you close out a party. How many of you are closing parties at nine, ten, eleven o'clock at night because that's convenient for your host? That's not convenient for you. You can say, you know, I close shows on Tuesdays between two and four, and they can take a five-minute, ten-minute break and close out the party with you. It, it just makes me think about everything. You have to set expectations yeah. that way. People will either rise to your expectations or fall to your lack of expectations, right? You don't want your kids living with you when they're 40, so you have expectations for your kids, right? The same thing in you. If you can all remember my favorite mantra in the world, you are not a towing service, right? <laughs> You're not towing your team to the finish line. You're not towing your host to the finish line. You're not towing people to the finish line. You're not towing service. Mm -hmm. These are adult people. I guarantee your hosts actually work within a time frame when they have to get their taxes done, their hair done, their nails done, the doctor's appointment. Right? They don't call the doctor and go, I'm sorry, that's just not going to work for me, and I'm going to need you to be there at Saturday at 3. And that's how it's going to be. <laughs> And when you do, I'd like you to have a cute, uh, some snacks when I get there. I uh, sit in the office. It's just my favorite time. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, Hillary. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, you know, I just think about it. Who, who's wagging the tail? The tail of the dog. So, but within the cooking show best practices, are you closing the deal? I don't know. What do you guys think? I feel like I'm doing all the talking tonight. Because you're all very tired. You're looking at me. Like <laughs> I think Christina does. 
<laughs> Why do you think I do? It's because you have rocking shows. <laughs> she, she rocks her show. She does. Um, but I bet, you know, here's the thing. I have very rarely seen a bad show. I've seen shows that have a lot of opportunity, but I don't really go to a show and go, oh, this was so bad. Oh, pew, 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 pew. Never come back. I might go to a show and go, well, that was a little long. But there were a lot of great things that they did in the show, but it was just long. Or I might go to the show and say, that was pretty good, but they didn't do, they were closing the deal. What I'm, what I'm seeing is, and this was an epiphany I had the last time I was in this area because I happened to be doing some, some prospecting shopping. And one of the things that just blew me away is in the station style show, the show is so fast and furious that you all are not letting the people process the different opportunities. Because think about it, you've got all your guests, they're at the little island. They're reading the recipe cards. They're working. They're not thinking beyond what they're doing right there. Now, in a demonstrative show where we used to, where you guys would stand up and you juggle knives, flip a hacky sack ball, do a cartwheel. Well, I'm sitting back like you're all sitting back now, and I'm getting to think and process. You know, that looks pretty good. But in the station style show, they're actually in the throes of the show, right? So they, so their brain has to catch up. And many times what you're, do, what you're all doing, I'm saying you all collectively as a giant sales force, but a lot of times what you're doing is they're in the throes of the show and then you send them back down and now you're rushing through the rest because maybe the show went over yeah. and you're not letting me process. And so, yeah, I'm buying something, but I might not be buying as much as I would. And some people are booking shows and some people aren't. And typically the ones that book a party are the ones that maybe we're thinking about it to begin with, or maybe they, you know, for whatever reason, somebody, somebody sitting next to them said something, and then maybe for the recruits, it's somebody that's been thinking about the business opportunity, but you're not the one closing the deal, because you haven't really processed it. So I want you to think about, I'm standing for a minute, because my leg is killing me. Um, so think about this. You, you, you're walking in the mall, you see a dress in the window, and you go, oh, that dress. Then you literally have to go inside the store, right? So I like that. It's piqued my interest. Now I go into the store. Now I grab, I look at the first thing I do is I probably look at the price tag. Okay. It's within my price range. Well, now I look at it. I feel it. Do I like the fabric? I hold it up. I still look at it again. Now maybe I take it to the fitting room. Now I try it on. What I'm trying on, does it look fabulous on me? You know, if it's whatever the price is, let's say it's $90. Okay. If it's $90, am I going to get more than one wear out of it? Does it make me look amazing? You know, you go through all of these decision processes when you're buying something, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that happen from the time you touch the dress to the time you put it at the counter and give them your credit card. Many times in our show, we're, ru we're rushing everybody through that decision-making process. They can't process it fast enough. But what if you actually helped them? walk through the process. And you may actually bring them back, so when you're in the shop and share, you're bringing everybody back together, you might actually say, so, oh my gosh, did you guys have so much fun tonight? You know, in the stations, was that a really good time? And everybody's like, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you all got your hands on some amazing products. So I want you just to take a minute, think about the products that you touched and felt tonight. Which of those products would you like to bring home with you? And then you can see making a difference in your own kitchen. So you just walked me through the process. You got me to think about what I just experienced and how I can relate that to my home. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Or you can even ask them, I'm sorry. Don't go ahead. You can even ask them like, okay, so Maria, your favorite one was the manual fruit processor. So what would you use that for? Absolutely. Yeah. Your, your goal is to, is to interact and engage and get everybody really thinking about. And so, and, and, and may set the expectation, those are the products you want to circle first. Those are the products you want to put on your order form first. Those are, call them out on it. Close the deal. Did you write that down yet? Yeah. Yeah. 
But so often we're just like, okay, well, yeah, you might want to because we're. I, I know that in their minds they're like, oh, we're being too pushy, but you're not. You're not. No, you know, because here. I won't, well, I'm gonna get ahead of myself. But sorry. No, 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 no. That's no. I'm glad you're, you're going there. So, you know, are you are you closing the deal on the first selling the products that they want to bring home with them? And so I give you the words to use there, and I can send this to you later. But then in hosting, you know, here's a couple of key words. I also know that that you can see, some of you can see yourself using the many products in your own kitchen, so you'll definitely want to know how our host plan works. Or, go one step further. I mean, how many of you, when you go into a show, you actually connect with somebody in the room? You feel like there's one or two people that you really have a connection with. And you kind of, and maybe they're open to you, maybe they're smiling, they're, they're making eye contact, you're feeling like, you know, Hey gosh, yeah, Hillary and I are we're really heading off because Hillary's right to my right. That's why I keep picking on you. But you know, we're we're making eye contact. It's really great. And so the amazing thing is, I might just say in the middle of the show because here's the thing: most people don't host a sh host a party because because when I pull guests at a party after 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 a party, I'll say, so you know, what do you think about doing a party? A couple of things: they're either they don't think anyone will come to their house. Yep. Their fear, fear of failure. Oh, or, or two, you know, oh my gosh, you know, I, typically it's um, nobody, nobody will come to my house or, you know, um, I'm too busy or I don't have enough space in my house. Those are the things I hear, but, but nobody will come. But what if I actually show her that people will come? Right. What if I say, okay, are you, did you guys have fun here? I want to know where I'm taking the party next. Okay, who's all in? Hillary, I know you're having fun here tonight. Okay, you guys, when Hillary has the party at her house, who's all who's all in? So true. Well, now everybody raises their hands because they want to support Hillary, and you're like, oh, Hillary, you've got like five guests at your party. When you have these five and a couple more, now you're going to pick one with guests. So you've just talked Hillary into having the party at her house. You don't have to stop with Hillary. You can look at somebody else and do the same thing. You can do it a couple of times. But you've got to close the deal. You've got to close the deal. And then when you're, you know, and then when you're in the full service checkout, it's some of the questions that you ask. Um, you know, they have to see them having the party in their own house. They have to see that people are going to support them. They have to see bringing the products into their own house. They have to try the dress on. Sometimes I even say like. Hillary, we're going to do lime cheese and chocolate at your house. How does it sound? And everybody's like, what? Yeah. Yeah. More <laughs> French and mimosas. And you're like, as soon as you say mimosas, people are in. It's like, <laughs> but crack. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. You know, it's, yeah. So you're trying to, you're building excitement. You're getting everybody, you know, geared up to go. And then you want someone to say, could I do what you do? Could I do what you do? And that, the most powerful, and I say this every time I train, but the most powerful tool you have is your story. You know, is your story connecting with every single person in the room that it could, or is it so tailored to you that it's disconnecting people from you? Because, I'm, because and I've shared this with you guys before, but, you know, when I've been polling people after parties, and somebody said, somebody might say, oh my gosh, you know what, I love this company, they took my family to Disney, it was a blast, and then somebody says to me, oh, we're not Disney people. So rather than hear that they can go on trips, they're hearing Disney. Or maybe one of you shares the fact that this, this amazing company helped you to pay off debts, you know, saved you from the brink of bankruptcy, because I actually heard this, and someone said to me, oh, we're not in financial trouble. <laughs> okay, so think about my story earlier. So my story earlier, was that I wanted to come to, to a company that walked the walk, that I could be present with my kids, right? That's why I came to Pampered Chef. And so I can say that just like I framed it to you all earlier, but there will be people in the room that say, you know what, I am present with my kids. You know, I tuck my kids in the bed. My kids are right, have kids. kids. <laughs> or, love you. <laughs> True story. <laughs> or, yeah, many different things. But, but the beautiful thing is, what if I said this? You know what? I'm opening my party. My party opening is, hey, my name is Lisa Hendrickson. I've been with the Pampered Chef five years, and I love, love, love my job. 
Enough about me, I'll tell you more about me later. In the midst of the show, let me tell you, you know, I've been with a paper chef five years and I love my job, but let me tell you why I came to this amazing company. I came to this company because I wanted work-life balance. I wanted a quality of life. And I'm here today to tell you I have that. I have balance like I've never had before. I have the best quality of life and I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Now, every single, it's still my story because that's exactly why I'm here. It's not the detail of my story, but it's the 60,000 foot view. And you all will hear work-life balance and quality of life the way you want to hear it. It'll mean something different to each one of you. But then you can personalize it, can't you? I mean, like for example, you've got a, a, group, a whole group of people, as you said, you're giving the, you know, you know, higher version oh, of the story, sure. not as but much detail, but you could tailor it to, you know, a person that, you know, you know this person has, you know, three kids, or, you know, you know this person, you know, has, you know, is working 60 hours a week. You could tailor your story personally, you know, one-on-one. -on -one you could. What you just said was a key, one-on-one. -on -one. Right. Because here's, cause here's the thing. Um, and hold that thought for like two seconds because I want to come back to that. So when you're when you're closing the when you're closing the party out and you're and you're really going into your into your close, it's I know that so earlier I told you I've been with Pampered Chef five years and I love my job and I came for quality of life and work-life balance. Let me tell you why I stay. I stay with this amazing company because of all of you. Because of the relationships that I have. And the fact that I'm rewarded for the things that I do. And I have fun doing it. And it's not a job. It's like the best thing that I could ever do. And I know that some, some of you in this room are going to have a place in your heart or your home for this amazing company, and I would love to talk to you. Some of you may know somebody else that does. So when you, when you bring that full circle, that's really your kind of inspirational close. In the full service checkout, to Maria's point, when I'm having a conversation with Maria, and I'm talking, talking with Maria, and we're talking first, I'm not just rapid firing questions at her at full service checkout. And then I might say to Maria, you know, Maria, when you heard me talk about my love for this company and why I love what I do, what's the first thing that came to your mind? It's not, do you want to start a pamper chef business? Mm -hmm. You want to have a dialogue with Maria. When you heard me talk about it, you'll get a sense of where they're at when they tell you what the first thing that came to their mind was. And that's when you can have a more depth, in-depth discussion about some of the things that Maria was sharing. You know, she's got kids. I know you have kids. Those are the things that you can kind of converse back and forth on and be actually present in the moment. Can I just add yeah. something to that really quick? Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, full service checkout takes so long. Yeah. I mean, you can totally like keep it super quick, but then maybe the next day, call and have that full-on conversation and, and really like... Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, because most of the things, here's the thing. You know, when I was out talking to people the other day and finding <laughs> out things about it, those conversations don't have to happen over a year. Right. You can find out a lot. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? And then tell me more, tell me a little more about that, you know, and reconnect with them later. But at least you kind of can get a framework for okay, who's really interested and who's that's not necessarily. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Any comments, questions? What about our gallery out there? We still have three or four people out there. Too. Wow. Yeah, if you guys have questions, just text me, and then I'll ask them. My text is 757. You should know this, but 652-2657. Now that the whole entire Google Hangout world knows my phone number. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Google Hangout world. That's exciting. Chris is going to have stalkers. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, really quick. Star says um, she oh, does hey, Star. <laughs> I do, bless you, I do walk through life, but sometimes I feel as if others drive through mine. Ooh. Love the idea of my family as the board of directors. My husband and kids always help me prepare and unpack my after shows and keep me accountable. She said she hasn't really made specific goals, but she will fix that. Star, yeah. I love that. So you feel like you're the walker and other people are drivers. Yes. I like that. And you know what? That, that can happen. And then Amber said, um, what Lisa is talking about has made me rethink the way I talk to people while I'm out and about. Wow. Good. Good, good. Well, yeah. I'm, glad, I'm glad you all are getting um, some benefit from it. 
Yeah. Um, and feel free, you know, those of you that are streaming in, if you want to pick up the phone and call me, I'll be in my home office next week, and that, that's for anybody in this room. Um, if you want to talk a little bit more in depth. Whenever I come into the field and I train, I always give you opportunities uh, to pick up the phone and call me afterwards. Um, so, are you all fully booked? Your calendar's where you want it to be? Okay. So to help you, I want you to text this out <laughs> right now, right from here. I'm at a Pamper Shop event and in the contest to get the most bookings. If you're interested, text or message me back yes, and I'll call you tomorrow with the details. Why not? Let's just do it. Those of you that are streaming, I don't know if you can, can they see this? Where I'll, can I'll take a picture and okay, it. Why not? You know what? If we're here and we're in the moment, why not text it out and see if we can get a couple of bookings? I love it. I'm all about trying to help. <laughs> I'm just happy you're here. I'm happy I'm here too. Yeah. So I'm going to give you like five minutes to text that out. <laughs> some of us, some of us might need five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with you. It's like I'm doing this all the time. It's crazy. It's crazy how that happens. I need my computer. Kai okay, can do it for you. I bet she can. I always call Austin whenever I have an issue. She just told me how to close. <laughs> I was like, did I just get a text from Christina? No. No, I thought it was. It, it's on the Facebook. It's a Facebook post. <laughs> That's what I put in. Like, how cool is that? I thought she texted you asking me to have fun. Maybe she wants to drive to Ohio. What There's some pictures already. There's some buzzing. I like it. <gasps> oh, somebody's watching. No, it's just my husband's sex message. Oh, did you text him? No. Oh, <laughs> I love that text. I want that text message sound. Okay, so everybody here tonight who gets at least one booking from this exercise, um, let Christina know, or you can let me know before the end of tonight if it happens tonight. And then I'm going to send Christina a little um, care package for your next team meeting. Yeah. So she'll give you a little treat. Which is uh, December 7th, everybody. Perfect. Wait, is that right? That's the first. No, first Tuesdays. The Monday. Should be Monday. Oh, oh yeah. 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 So that's the seventh, right? Yeah. I think I already set up the event. Why don't you make contacts? <laughs> Just text the last five people you texted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all that my are team. not team members. <laughs> so that's what I'm having trouble with right now. <laughs> There you go, girl. Get See, it. I love it when you can take a picture of this because it's like, yes, it's official. I'm really here. I really need you to help. Sign the money. I'm joking. <laughs> is that Kai? Is that your phone? No, no, oh. me. Oh, I'm like, wow. She, oh my gosh, you're like the youngest in the room, and you're getting bookings. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm impressed. I am going to do, I am going to have a, 
Uh, I think a party for Kaya and her little friend. Again? Uh, <laughs> I love it. And, and, let them, and let them cook. In July. We had I'm a party. Actually, and she made a watermelon shark. Oh, they loved it. It was like the best. That's so fun. That was like the best that. thing. I have think I I'm doing, I'm actually doing a Christmas camp um, show at, um, with my sons, with some friends, like from church and stuff. While they're on Christmas break, so that'll be fun. That was like the hit of the party. A watermelon shark. Oh my gosh, that's talent. I mean, this is seriously the easiest thing. All you have, to, it's just like green dotting. Everybody knows what that is, right? But this is more personal because you're actually texting people. I have my host from last year who, she had like a $840 party or whatever. I was like, oh, you know, she won't. It's like a one-time thing, whatever. She called me the day. She's like, hey, I need to schedule my yearly party. I was like, oh. Cool. My yearly party. <laughs> cool. Now you're going to be on my annual list. Yeah. Little did you know. No, she said that. She said, I need to do my yearly party. That's, yeah. I was like, oh. Didn't know you were having a yearly party. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because we met like at a vendor event. So it wasn't even like, you know, I knew her because I didn't know her. It was really cool. Okay, so I'm going to give you a minute to wrap it up. But I have a nice little story. Um, <laughs> The show that I'm having on the 21st, this goes back a year ago. Um, my aunt was in a nursing home, and I spent a lot of time there. And one of the nurses was there. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just really funny. She had not known, I wasn't even going to have her at the time, but she came to my window at the pharmacy. Oh, wow. She goes, oh my gosh, I wonder where you, you've been. We just got to chit chat, and, and she called me, and she was like, "What do you, what do you, you know, want to get together?" Blah blah. blah. That's so cool. I said, "Well, I did start selling pamper chips. I Thank started you. selling pamper chips." She goes, "Oh my gosh!" She says, "Let's have a party." Yes, let's have let's a party. Have a party. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, I know my mouth probably went. Okay, so 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 a lot of what you're saying goes to this. Before you assume, try this crazy method called asking. Amen. I'm just saying. It was just. And just now it's like we have this this little bond. Um, Star okay. said, "Oh, really quick." So Star said, "Love the tips for the Station File shows, especially making my wine more general so that others can see how the biz could be for them." We love you, Star. Wish you were here. Okay, so here's your next text. See, I'm going to rapid fire text. Is there somebody that you've really been dying to invite to be on your team? Mm. I'm at a pam pamper chef event and would love to have you be on my team. If you're interested, text message me back yes, it will get you started. And I can help you earn $2,500 towards holiday shopping. Take a picture. Send out. Isn't this fun, Kai? You should send that to your friends. <laughs> but then tell them to show their mom. You say, look what I'm doing on Friday night. So this one goes to just that one person that you would love to have on your team. I actually have her for you open right now. She wants to sign, but she's getting ready to have a baby. I was like, this is the perfect time. She's like, I know, I just have so much going on. <laughs> We've had so many that, that start their business when they're when they're pregnant. That's and then, she works full time as a nurse, going to school full time. She's really active in the church. Is this her first baby? Yeah. Okay, wait till she has the baby and she doesn't want to go back to work. She's oh, she told me. She, <laughs> she said, yeah. Well, she's the the stuff she got this time for hosting. She's like, I'm kind of gearing towards getting ready. I'm like, yay. <laughs> Let's do it. So I have a feeling we've seen her. That's cool. I will say, oh, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, you're fine. I'm good. I will say that um, on Facebook, um, I think other companies are starting to get what we're doing kind of with the green dotting. And I think that this is a little more personal because after you send them this, you know, I got a book. Yay! Yay! 
Congratulations. How cool is that? Awesome. See how it works? See how a master plan works? Um, but I, I think that people, like, I can tell you I've gotten five in just in the last 24 hours. And it's from all the serving sets. And people are writing me now because I guess they feel like since they got something from me, they're trying to get something like me yeah. got something from anyway. So I think like doing something like this and then saying like, especially this one, why you thought of them would really make it more personal. And um, I think it's something we should do at every team meeting, honestly. Well, and that was, that's where my bridge was going next. I think if you're not doing booking and recruiting blitzes at every meeting, yeah. It's that. a perfect opportunity, even if you take five or ten minutes out of every meeting to do it. Yeah, because your text message list is different. It is. It'll always be different. So you just hit a different pocket of people each time. So smart. There was never a meeting that I did when I was, I never had a meeting when I was in the field that I didn't do blitzes. Mm -hmm. Whether it was recruiting blitzes, or oh my gosh, blitzes. my daughter said she'll join my team. Woo. All you had to do was ask. She said yes. Yeah, and she said yes. That's just like yes. that. Awesome. She's in PA, so how do we do that? She so signs right up on your website, and she can zoom in like the rest of these fun people, or we can get her a team meeting at her house. We're in Pennsylvania. Central. Central Pennsylvania, between um, Altoona and State College. Okay. And I then, Yeah, I have. We have some really sure. strong teams there. Chambersburg, yeah. Lewistown. Uh -huh. Yeah, we can get her. I can totally hook her up with her. Oh, farm country. I need somebody in Texas. Um, my recruit, my rock star recruit. We're in Texas. She's in Roby, Texas. I have no clue where that's at, but yeah. check with me. And we'll, we'll <laughs> that check Pennsylvania, with right. Texas isn't my region, but Pennsylvania, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know a little bit better. Oh my Texas. gosh, this is so this is fun. fun. Okay, so. Anybody out there got oh. some? Those of you that are, oh, hi. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> Message me if you did so we can tell everybody. So, fun. so what I thought I would do for the for the rest of the time together, um, I'm just going to go back to, this is like a little challenge. Um, what I thought I'd do for the rest of the time is just open it up to you guys. What do you guys want to talk about? What do you want to know about? Is there anything you want to pick my brain on, share? Um, you know, we've got a few more minutes. We've got what? 20 minutes. I'm just saying. Where Challenges. Anything you guys or how long do you have to be the like team? 18. <laughs> That's awful. But you Six can more years. Well, you could be a business partner. Yeah. I see lots of daughters your age working the business with their moms at shows, the parties, when I observe. My 16 year old that has some uncanny ability, and I don't know if it's just because she's young. She can talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. She'll walk, she'll be walking the dog, and we're like, we're like, well, he's been gone for a while. Where is she? We'll step outside, and we live right across the street, uh, street from single, single sailor housing. Mm -hmm. She's told three people that mom does pampered shot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know how she does it. <laughs> it's, it's amazing how our kids are. Don't you, don't you love it? Aren't you like, yeah, that's like so, so proud. Caitlin and Christina, well, I was telling Christina we met at Panera's one day and I said, yeah, the neighbor bought me tomatoes, sent tomatoes over with Kaya because I like you. I don't know my neighbors. I leave in the morning and I come home and it's dark. And what did I tell you? She says, there it is. What did I do? I went over. She was sick. And I, we got to talking, and I had a couple books, and I said, here, that was my $368 order that she just put on my... All because she sent you tomatoes. Yeah. See, that's... You know what's amazing? I love it when Christina said it. I was like, I got to see it. I got to see it. Look at her. Look at her. Look at her. Christina's pretty smart. Yeah, she's pretty smart. I never thought about those tomatoes. So now it's like when somebody does something like that. Okay, I got this. We don't think about it. If you don't know your neighbors, one of the biggest, one of the best things you can do is to have a holiday open house in your house. Honestly, because here's the thing. What, what I love about this, and it worked wonders for me when I did my very first Pampered Chef party. Um, 
But I literally just did an open house, three hours, you know, opened my house up, didn't do anything, you know, organized, set the products up, did little stations with vegetables and stuff, and then just worked the room. But the great thing was, the morbid curiosity of seeing what the inside of my yeah. house was like drove them to get into my house. <laughs> so it's like the best thing you yeah. can do. If you know how your neighbors. Now, how would you book that? Because I don't like to, like, for example, my, my husband, neighbors. Well, my, my husband's commands are all pregnant chicks. Uh -huh. And so a lot of them, like, I've been doing their baby showers at work for them. And so I come in with my brownie pan, I make them brownies, uh -huh. and then I find something inexpensive and I give a pamper show. I gave the um. That's cute. I gave the totes. The totes. I have it for your benefit though. If you have them come to your house, oh, that's 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 see that's right. because that's because cute. because yeah. now now they're like they're like hey Amir, can we have your wife's phone number? We want her to do our next baby shower. <laughs> and so and so now so now I'm the go-to person for the baby showers, but I really would prefer them in my home instead. I'm because I, I love entertaining. So uh -huh. you know I I would not I hate to be quite honest I hate fixing it and looking it. Oh, because it's just me. I can't really. Call so you would sister. rather do every party in your own house? If I could, I would. <laughs> I I, I think right. that you would get so many hosts. Oh, so I yeah. do too. Because yeah. that's the number one reason why people don't, don't have parties. Yeah. yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a huge kitchen. They well, actually, it's probably twofold. If I don't think anybody would come, and and I don't want you in my house. Yeah. yeah. It's a mess, or I have dogs. Or I don't want people in yeah. my house. I mean, yeah. in general. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have to tell you, if you were my camper chef consultant and you said you would have my party at your house, I'd be like, I'm all in. It. <laughs> and I will tell you, like this new company that I just found, um, they she's doing parties at her house because she doesn't want to lug all of her inventory everywhere. I mean, well, it, it's a totally different company, but it's still kind of the same concept. See, well, some, see, sometimes my husband can come out and greet me if I've got like a lot of food, but other times, you know, until I show up, he's busy. And so, you know, I, I have to go through the gate, I have to get on base, you know, so on and so forth. And so, you know, I'm either having to bring it in in, you know, sets mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever. But, yeah, I would actually love to have them in my home and have everything set up accordingly. You know? And you could tell, and you could totally do that because you're the CEO of your business. <laughs> but I don't, I don't want to make it too, like, I don't want to obviously be selfish because I think it's manipulative if I'm like, oh, it's pampered chef. Instead of just saying, please come to my home, you know, I'll feed you. <laughs> you can do it. I'm, really I'm, I'm really genuine about it. I'm like, I'll feed well, you. When I did my party, but when I did my open house, it was it was very clear that 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 I was doing a pamper chat. I'm having a pamper chat holiday open house. Come try all our new products and have cocktail and some appetizers. And people came not necessarily that time because they wanted the products. They just truly, I could tell they wanted to see what my house was like because they didn't know because I didn't really associate with that many people. Um, one of the things that I did a lot in the field though, for those of you who are thinking, well, you know, what Maria's saying is great, but I don't have a house that I want to have people in. So a lot of a lot of um, senior citizens centers have like a community room with a kitchen. And so that's that's amazing. I mean, you know, you can you can bring in an, or, or new housing developments will let you do them in model homes. I mean, or clubhouses. Yeah. So you just, yeah. So just think, you know, don't, don't be, don't box yourself in on where business is because business is everywhere. everywhere. You just have to really kind of start being creative and being innovators. Um, and just know that when you're present, you know, think about if you're really present in the moment, it's amazing how things will slap you upside the head. Mm -hmm. You'll be like, oh my gosh. I mean, people will present themselves to you in ways you never thought possible. What else? Anything else? Any other comments, questions? You could do like theme parties. Like I'm trying out this pampered chef salad and sangria party. Come on over and see what you think. I'm just looking to see what else I have here. Right, Christina? Come be my guinea pig. Yeah. Yeah. Then you have to show up your house. You can show up the products and you get to eat them. Yeah. So here's one thing that I will I will leave you with. Um, one other thought. Affirmations. You know. Are you telling yourself that you're going to be successful? Because that's what you know. I love. I you know. I love my four pillars: belief, passion, skill, well. But you think about that belief triangle, because you have your belief at the top of the triangle. Your beliefs determine your actions. Your actions determine your results. Your results then determine the belief. They feed into it. So if you don't believe in something, it typically is not going to happen, right? Because 
you don't believe it. So it's like if you think, well, I go out there, I talk to people, they're going to slam the door in my face. Well, that's probably what happens is what? You don't talk to people. Okay. So then your results stink. So then you think, well, it's gonna, you know, it's why I don't talk to people because it's not going to work. So the one way around that is positive affirmations. And I love this. Um, I always think of Stuart Smalley on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> <laughs> when he used to say, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, I've done God of people like me. Love but it's really as simple as telling, you know, what you tell yourself comes true. Because, you know, the thing about it is your brain is not as smart as you think it is. Because if you tell it negative things, it actually starts to starts to make it happen. So one of the things that I saw one of our leaders in the field do that I thought was so amazing is that every day she would write on an index card another a positive affirmation and they were they were crazy things like some of them were really cool some of them were like I am a successful business owner I am green by the 15th every month some of them were paper shop some of them were I am 20 pounds lighter right wow. you know I am an amazing mom and so every day she would write a new affirmation and then what she would do is every morning she would read all the affirmations she had already written. So on day one, it's one affirmation. On day two in a month, it's two affirmations. On day three, it's three affirmations. And she said it was amazing that by the end of the month, how her whole outlook on everything changed because if all you're doing is feeding all this positive stuff into your mind, she said it was like at the end of the month she felt like almost free. And at the next month she would just start all over again with different affirmations but it was like for a month it was for she wrote 30 affirmations and she would just read them in the morning and before she went to bed so think about it at the end of the month you're reading 60 positive things 30 in the morning 30 at the end of the, end of the day i just thought that was brilliant um because the reality is this is a business that can can be difficult at times right you have ups and you have downs. And so while the real thing is, the, the basic concept of our business is not difficult. You know, you go out, you talk to people, you put parties on somebody's home. But the reality is, though, it's no different as far as your time and talent than if you built a brick and mortar store. You're still going to put in the same amount of time, same amount of talent, same amount of blood, sweat, and tears. You just haven't mortgaged your house to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So... How do you get over those times? Because because if everybody could direct selling is an easy business model, but if it was it's an easy business model, but the business itself isn't necessarily easy because it's you have to have a stick to itness, right? If if everybody could do it, there'd be no retailers, there'd be no restaurants, everybody would be doing direct sales. So I really think that sometimes you know just telling yourself what you believe. Me personally. I have a whiteboard in my office. Every day I write a different positive message. When I was in the field, so here's a little thought for you, just food for thought I like to throw out. Well, when I was in the field, every day I actually left a message on my voicemail. I changed my voicemail message every single day. And the voicemail message told people in my organization where I was that day. So I would just go out and out. So I would say, Hey, it's Lisa. Today is Tuesday. Da, 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 da. And today I'm going to be at the McDonald's on, you know, Bethel Road from 10 to 12, you know, helping people start their business. And today's positive thought is, and I would always leave a motivational message. And it got to the point where they held me to it. Like there were times where I was like, I didn't feel like leaving it. And then, and, and like, it would be like 10 o'clock and somebody would call me, where's the message today? You know, I wanted to hear the message. And what was great about it, though, is not only did it help me to kind of get in the right mindset, it also helped the people that I work with, too. So when you think about that, what's, what's the behavior you want the people to adopt? Anyway. I try, that's why I try to post those daily. Yeah, and they are, they're very helpful, you know. I, I didn't mean to post that one about wine and the cereal the other day. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> it said, it said, I didn't think it was you. Like, oh, I was like, I've got other friends. I don't know where, I don't even know where or how it happened. It I saw it on some other people's. Oh, Lord. I was like, all these people think I'm alcoholic now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> No, but it's true.
anything else? Anything you guys want to talk about? Anything you want to share? Anything? Anything? Don't be shy. Lisa's awesome. So, so what's going on at home office that you can give us? Oh my gosh, <laughs> what's going on at home office? Well, if I told you, I'd have to kill you. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I can tell you guys that 2016 is going to be amazing. There, there. I wish I could give you specific details. Um, there's just, it's just going to be such an amazing year. We actually did all of our planning two weeks ago. Um, for those of you that are directors, you want to be on the December 1st call. That's my call. I'm going to be hosting. Um, you do not want to miss the December 1st call. So if you are a director, be on the call live because you're going to hear some, some pretty fabulous news about 2016. So if that's not a carrot that I've dangled, I don't know what it is. If you're not a director, the minute that that call is over, so that call is at um, noon central time, which is one o'clock Eastern time. So at two o'clock Eastern time, you need to be calling Christina or Hillary or whoever, <laughs> whoever your, whoever your, um, whoever your directors are, or Maria. I don't know how many of you are directors and how many aren't, um, but you want to definitely find out the scoop. So. It's on the first, right? Oh yeah, I already have it. You, you will be. You will be. I'll be back. You'll be back. I have full faith in you. What time is it at? 1.30? 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. No, 1 o'clock your time. Yeah. Noon, because I'll be in Chicago. 1 p.m. So you want to be there for that. Gosh, what else can I tell you? Um, I can is it true about the books? We're not getting the books next year? The planners? Okay, so yes, let's talk about that. Let's just let's just throw that dice on the table. Thank you, Hillary. Yeah, we do. We, I thought everybody got Everybody didn't get that email? No. 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 There um, will not be pl consultant planners next year. Um, and let me tell you why. Um, more than likely, we're, we're in the works to have something that you can print from the from consultant's corner, a calendar of some kind. Sweet. Um, so we're talking about that. But that being said, here's what we found. Most of the field was not using them. And so we were yeah, sending never them. got one. You never got one? Yeah, yeah. So they weren't using them. And they were coming up with their own planning systems. And so many people, you know, here's the thing. What I know to be true is that I can't tell you how many planning systems I've used over the years. And I think it's a really personal choice. It's like I was, you know, I taught Franklin Covey for years and a job that I had. So I was married to Franklin Covey for a period of time. And then I got away from Covey and went to, <coughs> you know, somebody else. And so I think that there's a planning system is almost as personal as what phone you use. And so what we were finding is not our planners didn't fit. It wasn't like a carte blanche. So what we were also seeing is those that were using our planners were modifying them drastically. Yeah. So they were saying, well, I have these pages and I do this and I do that. And then we're thinking, well, we can't really have a one size fits all planner. So why not take that money and invest it in something amazing True. and give you guys the opportunity to have your own planner. So while it, while it's kind of like an, uh, I don't think it's like a, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of like, well, so, so hopefully that helps. What else? What other questions do you want to ask? Do you guys have any questions out there? Oh, we're down to two. Oh my gosh, you guys have homework questions. Tell us what questions you, you have. have. That was like shocking. <laughs> oh do you want us to share our teacher before we go? Yes, I do. I actually do. Okay. Um, I have a you don't have to share, but if you want to share, I would love to. She should say hi. Oh, I'm going to go first. I haven't written on mine yet. I have mine. Mine says I have a cute goal and I have the needs to go. Nice. Oh, you, what is yours? Mine says I put I have achieved my goal. And brought happiness to others. I love that. Oh, that's so good. I love that. Thank that's you for that. sharing that. That's great. It's, it's I want that to be mine. Let's it's, make it's, sure. It's, it's the truth, though. I just, and like for me, and that could be I just, for, I just need to get organized mm -hmm. because I'm like, I have stuff here and I have stuff here. But once I get myself, I'm still fairly new. Okay, so here's where I'm going to play devil's advocate on organization. Organization's great, but there are so many people that say, I've got to wait till I get organized, or I've got to do this. I'm going to tell you, just do it. Just get out there and work on the organization in the sidebar. 
See, that's what I'm doing. That's what I do. Like, you know, <laughs> I have a party on the 21st. I've got two bookings out there, but I don't have them in my in my. Okay, so list. it's Melissa, right? <laughs> okay, because I thought that was your name. And I had <laughs> no, or I was like, gotcha. So here, so Melissa, give yourself. You know, say okay. In order to be organized, I'm getting. I'm going to take one day to get organized. Not. I'm gonna do it in increments and you know, it's it's a do or die. Today's the day. I'm all in from seven in the morning till ten at night until I get everything in order so that I can jump in with both feet. Yeah. And, I and just that's do what it. I actually I have I to do. do. I have to sit down and I have to get yeah. it where it needs to go. Like Nike, it just I yeah, have Nike made a sign like a little binder. binder. And I have all these invoices in it. When it comes to tax time, I'm gonna be the one going. Well, that's going crazy. There's Star. She said, thanks for sharing. I have six pages of notes. I'm excited for my upcoming parties, and I have, I'm looking forward to implementing all you've shared. Oh, thanks, Star. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Any other t-shirts? I want to hear about one. Yeah. I spend my days. You need to share yours. I can do it. I spend my days at home with my family and I make money. Would you like to know how? Hashtag oh. happy spoon, hashtag keep Oh, rocks. that's nice. Hillary, you have to make that shirt. Wait, what does it say? Start over. <laughs> that is really cool. I spend my days at home with my family and I make money. Would you like to know how? Hashtag happy spoon, hashtag keep me rocks. That is nice. I love that's it. That's cool. <laughs> did, oh, you want, did you want to design that for all of us? Sure. Hey, cool. <laughs> Okay, uh, Kaya says life is too short for negativity, so always be positive. <gasps> oh, what a smiley face! Wow, that's really good. I like that. Awesome. I think I shared mine a few weeks ago on Poppy Talk, and I think it was something like I'm just trying to remember what it was, and I think it just popped in my head. Um, it was something like um, I help others achieve their dreams. I can help you too, or, or something like that. And I don't remember, but I need to write it down. Something like that, yeah, I'm reading it. I help other achieve. Others. What I love about this exercise is so many people that I've worked and done this with, there's always a handful at each, or a couple, there's been a handful so far that I've actually gone out and made a shirt. And then I've gotten some really cool pictures, so that was mm -hmm. kind of fun. Anyone else want to share? Mm -hmm. Go to Michael. Mm -hmm. yeah. My mind's more family oriented, but it's yeah. uh, Team Agar. And um, what I wanted to signify is basically that our family, not just me, but my kids, my husband, you know, we're, we're a team that looks, you know, Kimber I love it. You know, I love it. There's I love a it. And what, what, what's so funny is I'm, I'm working on a children's book because our name is A Bear, and my daughter has a, has a, has a teddy bear named Teresa, and her name used to be A Bear. And she so happened to find a family of bears. And that's what the story is about. It's about this little bear that found a family of bears. Oh, cool is that? Oh, my God. That's cool. Thanks for teaching me to see bear. Wow. <laughs> that's cool. So it's, a, it's the adventures of Teresa A. Bear, formerly Teresa A. Bear. That's, <laughs> that's a cool name. That's really cool. Thank you for sharing. That's awesome. Anyone else? Don't want to leave anybody behind. So before, so before we end here, I thought I'd, I'd share with you. So Pamper Chef this last summer did Take Your Child to Work Day. So I got to bring my son. This is my son. This is one of the other co-workers' daughters hanging on him. Um, but I wanted to show you just how. Well, that's not going to go. It doesn't like us again. It doesn't right now. Where? Right so this is, everybody, this is the um, fourth floor, or third Fourth floor of the Pamper Chef, for those of you who haven't seen it. I thought I'd show you some because they're home office pictures for those of you who haven't seen home office. <laughs> oops, wrong. Oops, oops, oops. So much for me wanting to. Okay, so <laughs> that's my Austin right there. With, she's yeah. hanging on again. <laughs> he, he met a little girlfriend. Yes, Look, I mean, everybody watch that now. So they actually got to, the kids got to, to come up with new products. They got to make a prototype. But I wanted to, I wanted to show you some. Oh, that's Austin and I making pizza. So fun. 
So this is this is on the first floor of the home office where they have all these monitors. And oops. Goodness gracious. There's the test. Oops, oops, oops. There's the test kitchens. So for those of you who haven't seen a test kitchen, that's what the test kitchens look like. And there's my Austin Curling's hair like he always does. <laughs> Okay. It doesn't like us. I know it doesn't really. There we go. That's them taking a tour. And uh, so I thought this is a, um, in the product labs where they design the product. So for those who haven't seen that, I just thought some of these were a home office that's real typically. Oh, what we don't need. And that's this is my um, my grandbaby and uh, my son. So anyway, um, yeah. and then one last picture. I just thought I'd show you that. Aww. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> I love that. I love that um, her, your display. That, that was a 35 year old and Yeah. So there's our Christina. Aww. So thanks everybody. I hope you're not going to be strangers, but I mean, seriously, you can always reach out to me, ask me questions. I don't want to keep you here all night, but I'm happy to answer. Oh, one last thing before we leave. Christina, come here. Uh-oh. I'm in trouble. <laughs> okay, so at the home office, we have this thing with the managers um, that, I don't know, has, has, have you guys heard of the giving keys? No. Okay. So the giving keys, um, so... Um, the giving key is, I can't think of her name. Um, can okay. it for you? So it's, go ahead. Yeah, so it's all about um, embrace. I only do it there because I can. It says pay it forward, embrace your word, then pay it forward at some point to a person you feel the need that you feel, you feel needs the message more than you. Write us the story of why you gave it at thegivingkeys.com. So, so the giving keys is, um, um, I can't think it's Kathleen Crosby. She started these keys where she repurposed actual keys that were used like for just different things, like to get it to open your house, to open a lock or whatever. And they were repurposed. And then she had words written on the keys. So, um, a couple of months ago we were at the home office and we, all the managers were given a key and we each gifted each other a specific key. So Judy Joel gifted me this key, um, Believe. And she said she gave, gifted it to me because she always believes in me and she knows that I have such a strong belief in the company and in the field. So I want to give. Oh, my shut up. Aww. So I want to gift my Believe key Aww. to Christina. Oh, Oops. <laughs> okay. And because, because I believe in you and I believe in all the amazing things you're doing with your team Aww, and, you. and you believe in them. So you can pay that forward sometime to somebody else that I pay it forward to. Aw, so. you're so sweet. Oh, thank you. Say that right. Oh, no. Oh, oh we're taking yeah. a picture now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I love that Melissa's taking this picture path. Hey, I can take good pictures. <laughs> you going to send it to me? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> thank so, you. So use your key well. And here's your little... That is so sweet. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a cool concept. Yeah, it's, it's, they're all repurposed keys. You can go to thegivingkey.com and they have all kinds of different um, so cool. faith and hope and all kinds of different words. So, Aww. Yeah. Look, I'm like going to cry. Can Let you guys so do that like one more time? Oh, a little bit away from the flash. A little bit away from the screen. Well, the TV. You mean my, my big fat? Face the, on the, the No, the brightness. See how it is. You're glowing. Is the blue better? I don't know. All right. Yeah, Whatever it is, I don't it? look good. She'll look fabulous. And that's what it's supposed to be. Thank you, Kaya. See, well, I like just want to thank you. See the difference? Look. That was oh we yeah, we had a big glare in the back. Yeah. We looked, we looked like we were, we were glowing. glowing. Well, I just want to yeah. say kudos to all of you guys yes. for taking time out of your crazy schedule to come. I really appreciate it, and I hope you got something out of it. I mean, oh, I mean, now you understand <laughs> why I love this lady. She's amazing. So.
Well, and I have to tell you, I think Christine is fabulous, but she speaks so highly of each and every one of you. We have conversations when we're coaching, and she's always talking about her team of rock stars, and she has amazing things to say. So don't be strangers. I mean, I know that you took time out of your schedules to be here, and all of you streamers, you too. Yes, um, say goodbye, everybody. Don't be strangers. Like, give me a call, pick up the